Hey there, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be installing a disc brake conversion kit on this Dodge 8 and 3 quarter rear axle. A couple of things worth noting. First, this is in a truck, came out of a 1974 half ton, but my suspicion is that it's probably the same even for passenger cars because really we're working back here and they're all the same. Second thing to note is, well, you can see it's already taken apart, so I'm not going to show you how to take the drums and all of the backing plates and things like that off. I probably have a video where we do that. I had done some bearings in this before, so if I find a video, I'll put it right up there. Now I know, I just said that they're all the same. Really, it's at eight and three quarter, right? But that is not 100% true. These are on a half ton truck, and so the rotors need to have a bolt pattern that match my wheels, which is five on five and a half, which is an unusual pattern, especially for an eight and three quarter. I looked all over, couldn't find someone that offered it, but the Ram man where I got these, I called them, and they do have that kit. Another thing to know, when I bought these, they estimated it'd be about two weeks to get it. Took about two months to get it. So... If you're in a rush, this might not be the route to go, but considering my truck right now is just a frame, I wasn't overly concerned about it. I have plenty of other things to work on, so the two months that it took to get was not a problem for me. But if you are looking for something and you want to do it next weekend, keep that in mind. Contrast is a little bit hard to read, but it basically says that you should have uh, somebody that's experienced doing this job, and unqualified people will ask, what are slip joint pliers? How do you put snap rings on or take them off? Where does the rotor go? Where does the ABS wire go? How do you bench bleed a master cylinder? Yeah, if you're asking these questions, I agree, you should not be doing this job. Got a big old warning, and nicely, looks like some decent instructions. We'll go through those in a little bit. Probably worth mentioning, at the time I purchased these, it cost $1,000 for this kit delivered. Five on five and a half, that was the thing that made it a challenge to get this kit. All right, it says here that I might have to grind down the axle flange for the rotors to fit. Mid-90s Ford F-150 rotors, that's a good thing to know in case I have to replace these in the future. And as it says, they're the only people that make a disc brake kit for the 5 on 5 and a half inch bolt pattern with the large flange. Though it does say this is for a 9 and a quarter, I'm hoping that this will work for 8 and 3 quarter. They said it would though, so... Information about the warranty, etc. All right, now let's get into the real kit. Pair of hoses. Caliper loaded with brake pads. And it's got the uh, provision for the parking brake or the e-brake, which is something that I definitely wanted on this. Bags of hardware. Tabs for holding the brake hoses. I suspect those have to be tacked on. Most likely new e-brake cable. I don't have any e-brake cables on this thing right now. The old ones are rusty as hell, so they have to go new anyway. Another caliper. Again, loaded meaning it's got brake pads in it. Some sort of adapter plates. My suspicion is these are something that adapt the flange to the caliper hold bracket, something along those lines. And this is the other part. He's got some threaded holes, and they're pretty beefy. So these are probably the caliper support braces here. All right, so this is really the kit, along with rotors and calipers that are sitting over here. But this is really what needs to get installed onto the axle. 
you might be tempted to wonder why that's a thousand dollars well if you were wondering that rebuilding old cars is probably not the hobby for you let's go get this stuff installed before you get started on this project take your axles and measure across the flange here this one is roughly seven inches Next, measure across this opening in the rotor. This one is about six and five eighths. That flange has to sit all the way down in here. And since it's seven inches across and it's only six and five eighths across here, there's a problem. The only solution, and it even says it in the instructions, is you have to machine that flange to fit. So if you don't have a lathe, and I suspect most people don't, You've got to take this to a machine shop and have this flange turned down to probably about six and a half. I would take the rotor in with you and have that turned down so that it fits just inside of here. I do have a lathe, so I'm going to take that over, put it in, and make that flange smaller. Machine it till about there. I took about a quarter inch off. Now it sits nice and flat against that face. Assuming you've already taken all the back plate and everything off, you're going to end up with this flange and it's going to have five studs in it. You want to knock these four out. Removing them is easy. You basically just take the nut off, smack it with a hammer, and they'll come out the back. If you were going to reuse these, but we're not, but if you were going to, you wouldn't want to beat on this because it's going to deform these threads. Put the nut on just a couple of threads, tap it out, and then uh, remove the nut, and then pull them out the back. While I have everything apart, I'm replacing the seals as well, so I'm going to put the seal in here first. Lubricate the housing. It's just WD-40. Then I'm going to lubricate the rubber seal as well, just so I don't have any dry steel running on that rubber. Next, out of the kit, you'll take the four grade eight studs. You can see they're flat on one edge. Those are gonna go in with the flat toward the tube. Really, there's only one way they'll fit. That's why it's got that flat spot. Now take this shim and it goes on. Now we're going to run the axle in here. If you take a look, the bearing has a ring on it, and that goes flush against this spacer or shim. And then the flange from the bearing goes on there. We can push those through. Next up is this mounting plate. It goes with the flat spot up and toward the front of the vehicle. The rear is this way. So this part goes toward the rear of the vehicle and up. Now we have four holes here and four here, but there are only two bolts and two bolts. So when you put it in, you can clock it in two different directions. You want it clocked this way as far as you can so that this is as high as you can get it. It keeps the caliper up so that it can be bled. That means you're going to use this hole and this hole on this side and then the corresponding lower ones over here. So just come over the top. It mounts like this. You can see I'm in the top holes here, the very top one, and then I guess third, and then second and fourth from the top here. So it looks kind of like this. Again, rear of the vehicle is here. Before we put these nuts on those studs, we want to put these four bolts in. So take the bolt, put a washer on it. You want to get it into these holes. You can't tilt that if you have those other nuts on. So 
So now it looks like this. Got the four bolts pointing inward and the studs pointing obviously outward. So I'm going to put the nuts on. To save yourself frustration, it's important to do it in this order. Because if you put these on and tighten them down, you can't get these bolts in. I'm still not going to tighten those nuts down. Instead, I'm going to mount this. This goes onto these four bolts, but first we have to put these spacers in. So each bolt gets a spacer. And the caliper bracket goes on. At this point, the whole assembly is really floppy, but it's not a big deal. Once we tighten it down, it gets real solid. On each one of the bolts, put a washer and lock nut. Don't forget the nut that goes on the stud at the very bottom that you hadn't used yet. Now, we're going to tighten down the nuts on the flange studs. So these ones here. Next, we're going to tighten down these bolts. It is worth mentioning that these bolts are fine thread, but those studs are coarse thread. So if you take all of the hardware apart when you start this, these nuts are the same size, but they have a different thread pitch. And if you put it on there and try to force it, you'll just strip one out. All right, now this is all fully mounted and very, very solid. Next, let's hang a rotor and a caliper on here. Hopefully at this point, you listened to my advice earlier and checked the size of this flange, and you haven't had to take it back apart and machine it like I just did. Now we're going to take the rotor and test fit it. Make sure it fits all the way against this flange here. And it should rotate nicely. Mine's a little bit tight because it's got a brand new sure grip in there. Now I'm going to go grab a caliper. We're going to mount it on here, make sure everything fits. With this kit, every single piece so far has been interchangeable left and right. It doesn't matter. The calipers, however, do matter. This bleeder screw needs to be pointing up. So I'm going to mount it like this, and this one's pointing up. The other one has it over here for the other side. I'm just going to take this piece of cardboard out. These caliper screws just pull out. There's also a wire on the back of this inboard pad. Just remove that. You want to keep this anti-squeak pad though. And we'll put it together with the piston toward the inside. Then the pins come through from the back. Then use a large Allen wrench to tighten them down. Now at this point you would normally put this on. So this banjo is going to go on the underside of the caliper here. And this needs to mount to a bracket somewhere probably right up in here. The kit does provide a couple of brackets for that. Now, I looked at their video and they just had them clamped on with a screw clamp. That is not the way I would go. So what I'll do is I'll take some of this powder coat off in a small spot, put this on, 
and then I'm just going to weld these tabs on. Also, you would normally hook up the e-brake cable at this point. I believe that the cable comes here, loops over, and then connects over to the other side, and the intermediate cable from the original pulls both of them at the same time. As I recall, on this frame, it was over on the passenger side. Actually, I guess over on the driver's side. Regardless, you can see this vehicle is not in any kind of condition to be running the e-brake yet, so I'm not going to put that on. I'm actually not even going to put the brake lines on because I don't have hard lines run yet either. Ideally, what you would do, though, at this point is take a couple of lug nuts and tighten this rotor down against that flange and just make sure everything rotates fine. This one's a little bit hard to turn. Again, it's because it's got a brand new sure grip center section in it, and I haven't even put lube into it yet. I know that this thing is turning, so I'm not too concerned about it. And there you go. We've got an eight and three quarter converted from drum to disc brake. It was a bit more work than I was expecting because I had to machine these flanges and the instructions weren't 100% clear in what came with the kit. Hopefully this is helpful. Thanks for watching.